so what we've tried to do so far is is we've shown the bias of the history of the quest for the historical Christ we've looked at specifically the atheist scholarship which has been very poor then we gave our own criteria of how we're to engage in this debate and discussion then we've been looking at certain evidences the early historical material giving a definition of that showing you why the Gospels are early historical material showing you that they are reliably reliable historically when they mention historical information and then we've looked at the Gnostic Gospels and why they are not to be in the canon of the Bible and why the four Gospels are better suited for that because they're more reliable in the historical information that they say and finally the Gospels are eyewitness accounts examples from Mark uh, it is the contention of this book, says uh, Dr. Borkham, that in the period up to the writing of the Gospels, Gospel traditions were connected with the name and known eyewitnesses, people who had heard the teaching of Jesus from the lips and committed it to memory, people who had witnessed the events of his ministry, death and resurrection, had themselves formulated the stories about these events that they told. These eyewitnesses did not merely set set a going a process of oral transmission that soon went its own way without reference to them they remain throughout their lifetime the source and in some sense that they may have varied the f varied for figures of central or more marginal significance the authority gar authoritative guarantors of the stories they continue to tell richard borkham jesus and the eyewitnesses there is evidence of eyewitness material in the gospel of mark he writes in a similar way to historians of the time who valued eyewitness accounts, writing such as Alexander and Prophet's Life of uh, Pil Cantonius. B. He used a common narrative strategy called inclusio. Inclusio is the literary technique of placing corresponding material at the beginning and end of a particular stretch of text, short or long, in order to mark off that section and to say something about the intervening section of the text. Inclusion, this general sense, is extremely common in ancient literature. So, um, I could give you more detail of why there's eyewitness material in the Gospels. Once you, we establish that there's eyewitness material in the Gospels, it's all over for the sceptic. Because then we can say, well, you know, whether you agree Jesus rise or, or not from the dead, we have evidence that people did testify to seeing this uh, and that's a different ball game then it's up to you whether you accept that testimony or not but you can't say that there isn't any evidence final conclusion mark 14 66 72 as we know that the gospel is based on peter's testimony why would mark put in peter's denial of jesus if it did not happen also, why would Peter be a coward at the time of Jesus' death and be bold preaching in Jerusalem 40 days later? What changed him from coward to being courageous? The account of Jesus' death has a ring of historical truth around it. Chapter 16.9 Mary Madeleine, a woman of ill repute, is the first to bear witness to Jesus. Why make a woman the first witness when a woman's testimony was not respected in the ancient world? In Mark 16.11 we are told the disciples did not believe the testimony of the woman why would you put material into a text that would be either deluded or lying it only makes sense that these events took place in mark we learn that jesus died on the cross mark 15 25 37 he was buried in a tomb by joseph of arathia in mark 15 43 and he was seen in the resurrection by mary madeleine the resurrection is stated a bodily resurrection that jesus who died is said to really appear to mary you not be, may not believe in a literal resurrection, but you must be honest and face the facts that the early church in this account is saying Jesus rose from the dead. Now these f three, facts of mod three facts modern scholarship would agree with. It falls in line with the work done by E.P. Sanders and others. If historical source material is early source, is reliable and based on eyewitness accounts, it fits the historical context and accords with the scholarship of more scholars I conclude the following if the disciples were lying this makes no sense why lie what would they gain they gain no money sex or power which people who start new movements are often after 
were lying. Why would you preach that your prophet died a criminal? People would not have been that silly. So why did they preach it? If they lied, the enemies could have just produced the body of Jesus and that would have been them exposed. Why preach in Jerusalem of all places? Your lies would have been exposed in no time. How come no one recanted of these so-called lies? Those who said they saw the golden plates of Joseph Smith, some recanted. Either they were deluded, had some illusion or vision. If this is the case, why do they insist on a real resurrection? The disciples were defeated by Jesus' death. They had been beaten by this. They were not in a fit state to have visions or grief-induced hallucinations as they were so disappointed, so lost, so shattered. They were in no mental state to be introduced by such fun, in, induced by such phenomena. Or Jesus really did rise from the dead. It makes sense. They put Mary as the first witness because she just was. It makes perfect sense. The disciples did not believe Jesus rose from the dead as they were crushed by Jesus' death and were not expecting anything. Mark is just telling us what really happened. You might say miracles do not happen, but that is a philosophical argument. And if you were honest, you would say that the only way to know if a miracle happened is to check the historical data. You might say there are contradictions in the gospel accounts, but you have to face the fact that all the gospel gospels agree to the main facts they have just pointed to in modern scholarship. Minor contradictions, if you can find them, do not overturn the big facts we know. You might say Jesus was a myth, but we have already shown how his early the historical source material is and any way this Jesus myth idea has no supporting evidence the Greek and Egyptian gods are in no way the same as Jesus if you read Paul Tark's a standard text on this his essay tells you what the ancients believed and it has nothing to do with the mythological diagonalizing gods look at Mary Sharp lectures It seems to me that looking at the historical evidence in a fair and honest way, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. If he did, it means we need to take his claim to be the Son of God seriously. It means we can know God through his Son, find forgiveness and have a future hope after the grave. When an atheist and famous philosopher, Anthony Flew, said this, the evidence for the resurrection is better than... When an atheist and famous philosopher, Anthony Flew, said this, the evidence for the resurrection is better and for claimed miracles in any other religion it's outstanding in different different in quality and quantity there we are hope that's been a blessing to you and god bless you